I've been playing this Altamira, the Tommy setup with this bridge, which is the original bridge, right? Uh, there's a video on my channel uh, with Tommy adjusting it. I've been playing this guitar in gigs everywhere. It sounds great as is. But Tommy is gonna put a custom bridge on it that he prepared himself. So you're gonna adjust the bridge that's on it now, or not adjust it, you're gonna put on a new bridge. So we're yeah. gonna put a new bridge that yeah. matches the same profile, the same spacing, and we're gonna compare how it sounds if you would replace the bridge with a rosewood high quality bridge versus the stock ebony which has been shaved down. Which and what's the, sh the, what's, what's the rosewood bridge? How do, what does it look like? So, rosewood bridge looks like this. Awesome. Really nice aged piece of Indian rosewood. Beautiful. And um, we make these in different sizes, and we're gonna try to size up this bridge with one of uh, one of the bridges that we have. You cut those bridges yourself? Yeah. So they're all machined in a pattern. There's four different sizes, and then we also have uh, blanks like this that on a it's something that needs to be more sculpted by hand and intonated. We we make it by hand with rasps and okay. uh, abrasives. So how long does it take to make how long does it take to make a single bridge? About four hours if you were to custom make it um, by hand and fitting and everything with the feet, fitting the feet, the top, the spacing, everything, uh, and then uh, fine-tuning the intonation. So it's a okay. four-hour process. And you see, I moved the dot. The dot was originally here, and with my very limited skills, I put a piece of tape on it and I bought a sticker online and moved the dot to nine because I'm used to nine. Do you think Altamira ever is going to make a guitar with a dot on nine, Tommy? What's that? Is Altamira ever going to make a guitar with a dot on nine? Uh, it's possible. They can make anything. Um, depends. <laughs> we just have to ask and we have to put it in the next batch. So. <laughs> you can call it the Christian van Hamert model. <laughs> uh, correct, yes. It's in the works. You're lining up the bridges? Yeah, I'm just trying to approximate the size of something that's going to be a good, good fit. Hmm. Okay, we're going to go with this one. This one's one of the nicer, um, ebonized rosewood that's uh, a little bit older. And why would you choose that one? Because it's most similar to the bridge that was already on it? Mm, not For necessarily, just because I like I like the way the wood feels. Um, it's a harder piece of wood. Okay. Um, some of these other ones are different, different origins of rosewood. Some of them are still got a lot of oil in it. Yeah. So sometimes I, we, we sometimes will cook these to get the oil content out. Oh, okay. Um, some of, you know, all, all rosewood stock is not created equal, so we try to... Cook it? You mean like in water, you just you boil the water or you put the... Microwave. Okay, microwave. Microwave. Yeah. How many guitars did you set up in the past uh, three days? I think eight. We did eight. Eight. Eight, eight, in, eight in three days. Today, two... Just here on the on the yeah, on your two, merch table? Two, yeah. all over there and okay. the hotel. This is like, the, this is the merch hall of uh, Jungle Fest Northwest. It's a great festival on Whitby Island near Seattle. And Tommy is here every year with a booth, uh, setting up guitars, giving advice, setting up violins. What you're doing now? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm actually just reducing the width because the footprint of the Altamira bridge is slightly smaller than this traditional Selmer yep. spacing. So in order to fit well between the mustache, we need to 
reduce the width. Reduce yeah. that. Yeah. It looks like a good fit. Did you measure it or is it just by eye? Just I take off, I count the number of strokes on each side. Okay. And because this is this side is it's actually this doesn't touch here. Um, just do five on each side. Okay, okay, okay. You yeah. know. Um, usually there's a, I have a, a saw that does that or a little sander that I can very accurately mark and take off. I always but catch you in situations where you have to improvise, but yes, well, you know. it worked out though. And of course you've done it a million times, so. Yeah. So now I'm adjusting the, uh, the string spacing. So I, the important thing is to make sure that the, that the, the post in which the string is, is at is, is even with the body and making sure that everything lines up. So you, you start with the center strings and then adjust from there. Okay. So now I'm going to do is just mark off the guitar with the, with the rule, um, make sure that everything lines up and then once I'm happy with the alignment of everything, then I'm going to make uh, cuts and then I'm going to reinforce those cuts and uh, after that we're going to see how it sounds. Okay. You're gonna make the slots Making for the strings? Beginning slots from the very simple notches. So then once the once the So now that the Spacing's been decided. We're gonna take the bridge off. Okay. We're gonna reprofile and polish the bridge, and then we're gonna see how it sounds. How do you? How are you gonna polish it with the the with same leather, kind of with some leather and compound okay. and some yeah. steel wool? Yeah. Slots for after I reinforce those slots with glue. See, with, when you have a bridge that's this slim, you need to reinforce this, otherwise, this chips rather easy. And you reinforce it with compound? Just with uh, some compound and some super glue. Okay. So then so we take some, some steel wool like this, we go over the, the top cap of the bridge like this. It takes all the spare glue that's on there off. No. So as you can see now, it cleans it up. So you've got these pretty clean little tiny indents that are now reinforced. And then there's any sort of spare glue on the side there. We just take it off with a good steel wool. Yeah. So there's that. So is there, if people want to learn this stuff themselves, right? Mm -hmm. Is there any books or websites you can recommend or is it just something or you have to well, train with a luthier or you know the, there's there are some tutorials on uh, I think Michael Collins has a good book um, that talks about the making of the guitars but as far as the setup um, and making choices for that um, there's not really a lot of information as far as what to do for what and that kind of comes with experience um, but I would encourage anybody who you know, do you ever do you ever give courses in that no that's something I have not done um, but I'm always available if people email me you know and they're looking for a solution I'm always happy to offer advice you know um, you know as far as what their okay. guitar needs so that yeah. is something I, I do free of charge so. okay Okay, so now the bridge is on there. The spacing yeah. is even. Yeah. So this, as you can see, when you compare a bridge like this, you've got a lot, something a lot different going on. This is the original bridge, right? Yeah, this yeah. is the original bridge, yeah. but it's been modified. So yeah. originally, I'll show you what they look like. When you're
Here's a couple standard Altamira bridges. They usually have big shoulders on them. They have yep. a cut, but they're big here, right? And this is another Altamira bridge. Now, yep. while they're nicely made and they're they're actually better than they ever were, um, or even something like this, which is the original one that was on your guitar. Yes. Um, they're a bit tubby here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you're not really getting the maximum um, tonal qualities out of the bridge. Well, really, the the bridge, the bridge, the you know, the bridge is it's a balance between uh, how easy the sound can get into the into the top, and also uh, the right density of wood. If the density is not correct, then you sometimes end up with too thin of a sound. So it's a balance between having ebony, which can make the sound kind of pingy kind of yeah. bell-like right. uh, and something that's uh, too heavy or not the right kind of wood and sometimes you know uh, sometimes you can make a great bridge out of maple, walnut, Brazilian rosewood, um, you know you name it there's all different kinds of woods. Well, what would you say is the biggest difference between an ebony bridge like the one that was on the guitar and the Indian rose bridge that's on it right now? The, the Indian rosewood is going to have much more mid-range it's going to be more immediate in the response. It's okay. Less, less effort to get the sound out. But um, the ebony bridge is going to tend to have much more um, sustain? Punch, punch. Sustain. Punch. Punch. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if you if your guitar, you, you know, you, you're suffering from an internal reverb issue, which a lot of people yeah. call these guitars wet. D, they, yeah, D holes have that too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Then you would recommend ebony or Indian rose suits. Sometimes it depends on the guitar. Okay. It's it's hard to say because I've had both. I've had it has to do usually with the ref reflectivity and the depth of the back. Okay. And how uh, the guitar is built. I can't wait to try this one. Yeah. yeah. So we'll tune it up now and yeah. see how it goes. Okay. So we're gonna try the guitar right now. We tune it up. Bridge is on it. Looks good. What I did notice is there's less of air be below the bridge. Yeah. Is that a is there a reason for that? Mm. You have to, when you take that much wood out of the design, you have to have it be taller to be structurally okay. sound because it's bare, it's it's designed to be so minimal that if you were to take the bridge higher, you might risk uh, compromising its uh, structure. Let's so, try it. Yeah. Notice immediately is that the sound is much warmer. It seems like there's more depth in the guitar. The funny thing, it still sounds. I still recognize the guitar. It didn't yeah. change the profile of the guitar. Mm -hmm. It just put some more, maybe overtones in the, in the, in the yeah. sound. But maybe less, little, a little less sustain, indeed. Yeah. But but still, there is still sustain. I just uh, remarked to Tommy that one thing that I do notice, but I said maybe it's an illusion, that it seems to be a little bit easier to play. And the guitar was already very playable. I like it. It was easy to play already. But now it seems to be even easier still. But you said that it's probably because it reacts better to light playing. Yeah, because there's actually less weight on the top. The top's not being loaded with a dense object. So it takes their, you know, it, if you pick it lighter, it doesn't have to push so much because you don't have this weight and this dense uh, bridge pushing down on the top. It kind of constricts the top. So the lighter you go, but the harder the wood, you get the, the nice overtones, the openness, but you also get a really crisp, direct sound. If you go to something like a walnut, you have all these overtones, but no solid fundamental sound. I guess so. that's the important thing to me. You know, my, my philosophy on buying instruments is as follows. The sound has to be pleasant, of course. You, you, you have to kind of like the sound, but it doesn't have to be the best sound you've ever heard, pleasant. 
but then the playability is what counts, right? So if the playability is good and it sounds pleasant, that's for me the, the two most important things when buying an instrument. So it does react better to light picking. Yeah. I would say it's more, it makes the guitar more sensitive. Usually the, the big problem with uh, an Asian-made import guitar is that they're not sensitive to um, what you try to express with color in your playing, you know, yeah. um, with the, the touch in the left hand and the right hand, right. you know, uh, Moses does a lot of nuancing with yes. that, and that's the aspect of the playing that, you know, it's always sort of a mystery, you know, and uh, for me at least, you know, that's, no, that's what I'm fascinated with, but it's having a, a less, to work less allows you to get that, at that lower volume, at that lower power in the right hand, get more out of it. More colors. Yeah. We're using violin terminology. Huh? We're using violin terminology. Yeah. It sucks, yeah. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's the same, like the violin, the violin I play is also set up by Tommy. The sound out of the violin is very pleasant, it's very beautiful actually. But so people ask me what's the difference between that violin and the modern Italian violin that costs 25,000. Because these violins are like 1,500. But the difference is maybe there are more colors. Not necessarily, but probably if you have a good one, there's more colors in the yeah. Italian one. But it doesn't matter, that doesn't change the beauty of the sound that's already in the violin. So to, uh, to include, so this guitar has a beautiful sound. It had an even more beautiful sound after Tommy's first adjustment with the bridge. And it sounds even better now. But of course, if you buy a guitar that's $5,000, uh, and if it's set up properly, there might be more different colors inside the guitar. But it doesn't change that the sound that's coming out of the guitar is beautiful already. So that might be the difference between a cheaper guitar like this and a very expensive one. But the most important thing is that you have to have it set up. That's the most important thing. All right, what is your opinion about buying a very expensive guitar and then not having it set up? Mm. Well, I find that generally, you know, a good guitar, uh, an expensive guitar, you know, above 3000 oftentimes needs uh, additional work and adjustment because you, you know, you get the guitar, uh, it's finished in Europe, it makes a, a, trans, a transatlantic you know, fly, right, yeah. and uh, you know, there's all sorts of things with humidity and whatnot. It needs to be completely readjusted, and sometimes, I hate to say it, the maker really doesn't understand how to set up their own guitar so that a player is like really super happy with it. Yes. And most of the time, when they think it's a good one or a bad one, it's luck because everything worked out. But you know, there's guitars that are I like to call them sleepers that are good, but you don't know because they're just set up poorly. Truss rod doesn't have the right tension. It's uh, the bridge isn't uh, hollowed out enough. You know, there's all sorts of things that are um, potentially you know holding back your instrument. So it's it's really a good idea to make sure that everything's been optimized and not just you know straight out of the it's box. It's the same point as our last video. Setup is crucial, and this guitar sounds really great now. I like the setup. I'm playing it at gigs. I have more expensive guitar at home, but I always play on this guitar. So there's there's that.